Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be checking out a video from Haley Alexis. Um, this video is titled Six Things Considered a Luxury in the USA, but they're not luxury in the, in, in the I was gonna say in the Germany. Oh my God, anyways, um, they're not considered luxury in Germany. Um, off the, off, like, first of all, I think probably the only thing that I hope she has in this video that I, I believe was a luxury is the Mercedes. I I really don't know a lot of things that might actually be German, obviously that um, the average American would go crazy over, but Mercedes was one thing I knew it was German and I used to go crazy over it. But um, yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this video. If you have any recommendations, click that link in the pinned comment section and you can recommend whatever video about Germany. I'll check it out as soon as possible. Also, link will be in the pinned comment well, the link will be in the description of this video for the original video, so you can go check out her, her uh, video and see, uh, you know, what she's going on with over there. But either ways, man, let's get right into this video. Thank you for watching. Well, hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey, you guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about things that are considered a luxury in the USA, but are considered relatively normal in Europe, more specifically Germany. And so with that being said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below in the comment section if you want to add anything to this list. And so with that being said, the first thing that I'm going to be talking about is or are farmers markets and shopping at farmers markets. Oh, shit. This is something very interesting to me because I loved shopping at farmers markets in Germany. They were an easy way to get a relatively good deal on fresh produ produce from a locally sourced vendor. I was sometimes able to buy box. I'll be honest with you. This is a good one. I wasn't thinking about it, but, um, you know, in South Carolina, I don't really know about Florida like that. If they had a lot of these, like, honestly, I never saw them. But in South Carolina, I, I, I did know that they had something like this, which was, you know, pretty cool. But it's not like a lot of people even, you know, went there. It was like the way how you would see this in Germany, it was definitely not like that in South Carolina. But, you know, um, this is actually a good one. I never thought about it. This is that were thrown together from farmers in the region and you would sometimes pay like a flat rate for this box and you would get Damn. a variety of fruits and vegetables to take Shit. home. You didn't really get a choice in what you got and this isn't necessarily how all farmers markets work but this was just something that I did a few times near my home. I visited one when I first got here and I think I grabbed $17 out of my wallet. I went to the honey stand. <laughs> I picked up a jar of honey. I put it on the counter and it said I wanted to buy it. And the lady was like, it's going to be $22 and some change. And I looked at her and I was like, confused. I wow. would have technically purchased it if I had the money to buy it, but I only had 15 or $17 in my hand. So then I started researching why are farmers markets in the United States so freaking expensive? People here eat like they have an unlimited access to healthcare. A lot of people in the USA, this is a stereotype, but it is unfortunately very true, eat <laughs> really crappy due to how expensive fresh produce is. And what I mean by this is that the families you see eating fresh salads and fresh vegetables and fresh fruits every day in their household generally have a lot more disposable income than the average American. And so farmers markets, they're offering organic, they're offering locally that sourced, stuff, they're offering yeah. low yeah. pesticide, yeah. no pesticide, they're offering good variety, they're offering, you know, delicious looking food that is better, supposedly better than getting it oh, in a no, grocery it is. store. It and is. so they're able to slap a hefty price tag on it. And it's due to the society that we live in. Because in Germany, people expect to have decent meals. They expect to have fruits and vegetables. They expect to have these things at a relatively affordable price. Right. And if people were having to pay um, $22 for honey, they would probably 
protest. So the next thing that is considered relatively normal in Germany, but seen as a luxury in the USA, is when you eat off of normal plates that are not made out of paper. And ah. if you guys have followed me for a while and watched any of my videos regarding reverse culture shocks here in the USA, you would know that paper plates somehow make their way, sprinkle their way into every video that I make. <laughs> and I don't know why this irks my nerves. I don't know why it bothers me so much, but I just find paper plates to be so excessive and wasteful. I had someone come over for dinner it, once. It is really like that for real though. Like I ain't even gonna hold you. Like I, I she actually has the second point, again, really a good point. Uh, because obviously, you know, in Europe, it's, it's, it's like, dishwashers exist like in the united states dishwashers exist just as 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 much but i i don't know the 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 disposable um plates are just like always used i don't know lazy probably that i don't know and i serve them on my real plates i don't even own paper plates in this house and they were like oh pulling out all the stops for me i see and i was like what do they mean by that and it didn't like register in my brain that they were referring to me using my real plates and not paper plates i right know on. that eating from a plate is something that should be automatic and normal when you are consuming food I know that there are people from the USA that will argue and say that it saves money and it saves time. And my counter Doesn't argument is money. that there are dish sets at Goodwill for five to ten dollars. You ain't gonna send them down, people. <laughs> what the? Anyways, um, it ain't even that. It ain't even that. It's not that expensive. Listen, if you're doing basic, you know, accounting. Let's not even use the word accounting, but if you're doing basic math, you put one plus one, two plus two, you get something, right? If you buy reusable, um, you know, disposable freaking plates, you're probably going to run you about, well, what, probably like six to ten dollars, right, for the pack, right? But check me out. You probably can get four good, you know, good size, normal size, you know, um, reusable you know, plates. And that's probably going to run you the same amount of money, right? Four, and you probably get about like 20, 25 in the, you know, disposable. But when you lock it in, guess what? The reusable, you're going to just wash them and repeat. That's it. You ain't going to buy them again unless you clumsy as shit, right? But the disposable, you're always going to be buying them over and over and over again. So I don't know what the hell they talking about. It is way more expensive to have disposable. Way more. Set pots, pans, plates, bowls, utensils, spoons, forks, knives, everything included. You could get a whole kitchen set for under 20 bucks at Goodwill that could last you for years. So the next thing that is considered a luxury in the USA but is relatively normal in what? Germany that, is yeah. the bread. And y'all, oh my gosh, do I miss yeah. a Brötchen? Do I miss a Simmel? I do I miss I a Kürbiskern, Kartoffelbrot of some sort? 1000% and please someone send me some bread. Mike and I were at Publix yesterday and a gust of wind blew me over to the bakery bread section and I sometimes like to dabble in American bread because I do miss you know just a nice shabby brot with butter maybe a bissel kiese maybe a bissel schinken uh, dazu and maybe a gurke you know a nice little brot site and who was with me lo and behold Germans and they were complaining it was so funny they were like yeah we essen diese scheiß nicht and they meant the bread in the middle aisle section of the USA I always find it interesting that people will shy away from an eight dollar loaf of bread that's baked at the bakery but are okay with spending 750 on a crappy loaf from no, I'm, I'm being real with you I, I I listen listen I'm the I, I don't know how, how do I put this I agree with her but if I'm in the United States, I'm not buying no damn baked bread. I'm sorry. I I'm just being real with you. Like, if I'm in Germany, hell yeah. I'm going to get the real deal because I'm in the spot with the real shit. But I don't see myself ever buying, like, some baked bread in the United States. I, I just don't see it, you know. Like, I don't see it at all. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know why. I, I just don't know. Like... It probably would be so hard to adjust to that, you know. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being stubborn. I don't know. But 
she has a point. I guess I'm just being stubborn because it ain't that hard. Put two more dollars on that shit and get the, get the real deal. But I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe if I try it once and it's actually really good, I'd be like, oh yeah, she'll run it back, right? But I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know what I'd do. But if I'm in Germany, I'm definitely getting the baked one. Known because the it's sliced thing. and it looks like more, even though um, the nutritional value of it is negative 1,000. <laughs> the next thing that is Thanks. considered a luxury in the USA but is seen as normal in Germany are the heated floors and heated towel racks. And I remember when I was living in this very small apartment, one of my friends FaceTimed me. And I don't remember how it came up. I think I said I have to turn on the like Fußbodenheizung or I have to turn on my towel rack heater <laughs> and my friend was like you have Yo, what force you have um a towel rack hold on heater? hold on hold on put the time out in <laughs> what ain't no way y'all <laughs> wait what that is not freaking normal I don't give a damn that is not normal okay that is what nah that just doesn't make any sense. Like, what? How is that even possible? I, I, I find this hard to believe. I find this, like, is she actually saying a heated floor? Like, heated for real heated? F but how's that possible? Like, that is not normal. That is expensive. The fudge. <laughs> Nah, bro. <laughs> There's no way Germans actually consider that a norm. There's no way. She's like, where are you living, Haley? Oh my gosh, so fancy. Little did she know that this was like the Kackbunung of the century and it was just normal where I lived. It was seriously the tiniest grottligste Wohnung aller Zeiten, but <laughs> nonetheless, it had, you know, Fußbodenheizung and it also had one of those like wall mounted heaters that I just called the towel rack heater. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if they're a towel heater. I think it's a wall unit that heats the whole bathroom or the whole room, but Shit. people use it to um, dry their towels or to heat their towels. And it's just something Damn. that can be found scattered in different homes in Germany, regardless if they are expensive or affordable. And so I found that wow. always to be really funny when I talk to people from the USA that never left the USA and never came into contact with these types of things when they really thought I was living this lavish- Bruh, I ain't, bro, I'm not even- <laughs> Europe right now. I'm in Finland. I ain't never seen that shit before. I ain't never even knew that existed. <laughs> no way. The the rack thing. I didn't know that existed. Obviously heated floor. I knew that existed, obviously. But damn, okay. Actually luxurious lifestyle. And sometimes I'd be like, oh well, my home has, you know, heated floors and then people be like ooh la la and i'd be like ooh, ooh, ooh la 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 but y'all don't know the truth is that you know i'm trying to get the rent lower i'm paying the lowest amount of rent that i can find in the city so mm, the next luxury in the usa that really isn't a luxury in my opinion is the work-life balance and right, the right, right. boundaries that you set at work a lot of people that I have come into contact with, especially with my new job, do not understand that there are boundaries that you can have as an employee. A lot of people don't understand the separation between work and life balance and they only associate those things with higher up positions or higher paid individuals and so they think that they're the bottom of the totem pole and they're never going to have a decent quality of life with their work they're never going to have a decent balance of work and life and they're never going to be able to set boundaries for themselves and this is just our culture and due to how our society and workers' rights and laws here are in the USA, that that sort of is true. But for me, I am a firm believer in setting my boundaries, especially since I've worked in Germany before. Maybe one day I'll start eating from paper plates. Maybe one day, I no, I won't eat the bread, y'all. Maybe I will shop at the farmer's markets and spend all that money. Don't know, could happen. But what I will not do is allow myself to be taken advantage of 
as some people allow themselves in the USA by a corporation. You always have to put yourself first. You can need a job, want a job, love your job, but you also have to love yourself, need yourself and want yourself. And so in order to do that, there needs to be a clear separation. And what I see is that a lot of people are not able to do that due to how toxic our work culture is. And like I stated earlier, a lot of people don't believe that they are entitled to like just basic human workers rights due to the simple fact that they are not a higher position and I'm like no 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 you are a human you are working you Motivation. are volunteering your precious limited time to a company and you need to get something out of it aside from a shitty ass paycheck. The last and final thing that I'm going to be talking about sort of ties into the work-life balance and boundary right. point, but it is that in the USA, it is sometimes seen as a luxury to have access to healthcare or mm. taking care of yourself. And in so many places in the world, not including, I mean, Germany included as well, but, you know, branching outside of Germany, healthcare is just as always a basic human right. I just wish that people would understand that taking care of yourself equates to such a better life. And there are Indeed, so many other does. ways than, you know, going to the doctor. Going to the doctor is very important. You should get your checkups. You should do your routine procedures. <laughs> well, getting a checkup is kind of like way, 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 in my humble opinion, way below taking care of yourself. Like if I take care of myself, the chances of having a having or requiring a frequent checkup is like almost zero you know it's, it's it's like a longer period because you already take care of yourself you know so yeah but there are also ways to improve your health as well and to take care of yourself walking being active eating the right foods having a good mindset in taking yourself out of stressful situations which is sometimes very hard but it is possible and I feel like we're sort of getting better here in the USA regarding this topic but there's so much work to be done got a lot and of work so those but I think it is getting better that I think are viewed as a luxury here in the USA but are considered relatively normal nah these things were definitely a luxury in the United States. I really did not expect her to come out swinging like this, but she had the Mike Tyson punches coming in. I was really like surprised. Like these are actually legitimate facts. You know, she spoke about the the the, the, the market and shit like that. And I really thought she was gonna just speak about some basic shit. But these were deep shit, man. These that sounded kind of shitty. Uh, but these were deep. These were actually things that you know I had to be like, oh yeah, this is actually different for real but um yeah shout out to Haley as usual link for the original video will be in the description of my video so um go check it out if you haven't already and uh yeah thank you for watching this video and uh any recommendations click that link in the pinned comment section and uh i'll check out that video as soon as possible and uh yeah thank you for watching peace